WRVO News Time, 1861. The Oswego Primary Teachers Training School opens its doors to students as cannon and rifle shots mark the beginning of the American Civil War. Under the guidance of founder Edward Austin Sheldon, the school continues to grow in spite of the conflict. And in the aftermath, some of the school's early graduates will travel south to educate children of former slaves as well as the children of plantation owners. More news in a moment, but first, a word from our sponsor. Looking for a place to take the family this summer? Then why not try Chicago's 1893 World's Fair? Enjoy a ride on the one-of-a-kind Ferris wheel. Walk inside the amazing Westinghouse Electricity Exhibit. And if you're interested in education, the Symposium on the Oswego Method is an absolute must-see. Featured speaker Edward Austin Sheldon outlines an education plan for the modern age and accepts a Medal of Honor on behalf of the Oswego Normal School for its outstanding contribution to teaching methods over the past 30 years. This just in, it's 1918. And as young Americans prepare to go overseas to join the European allies in World War I, the Oswego Normal School is doing its part by hosting an Army Training Corps right here on the grounds of the newly located campus. These young men raise the flag each morning at 6.30 a.m., drill from 10.30 to 3, and then shove off to classes until 5 p.m. By the war's end, 400 of these dedicated men will also graduate from the school. You're listening to WRVO. The time now is 1932, and here's the latest financial news. A steady decline in the world's economy has set in, and as a result, the United States is now facing what will later be called the Great Depression. Jobs are few and far between. Money is becoming scarcer by the day. The State Normal School at Oswego has found a way to provide some help using money from the state's Temporary Emergency Relief Administration to hire needy men from the city and county to work on sewer, sanitation, and other work projects on campus. It's a program that's sure to put food on the table while raising the spirit of the community. And now we turn to an important message regarding the plight of nearly 1,000 World War II refugees. It's 1944, and with the tide of the war turning in Europe, President Franklin Roosevelt has made arrangements to move 982 European refugees, many of whom are Jewish, from the war-torn villages of Europe to a safe haven at Fort Ontario in Oswego, New York. Later that year, First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt would meet with the shelter's commanding officer to advocate on behalf of the college-age refugees who wanted so desperately to continue their education. In the spring of 1945, the Teachers College at Oswego would open its arms and hearts to nine students, making the school the only one of its kind in the nation to ever have an enrollment that included Jewish refugees during the Second World War. You're listening to WRVO, your flagship station for world events. And now to the traffic report. You can expect to see a major increase in student traffic as you approach 1955. We're being told that this situation is due in large part to a phenomenon known as the baby boom. As a result, over a million more children will be attending school over the next several years, causing teacher shortages across the country. For the Oswego State Teachers College, this means the highest enrollment in its history, including a record number of teacher training applications. We interrupt this newscast for a breaking story unfolding on May 6, 1970 at Culkin Hall. As part of a nationwide student strike protesting both the shootings at Kent State and the war in Southeast Asia, approximately 100 student protesters have taken over Culkin Hall, dressed in embroidered bell-bottom jeans, fatigue shirts and jackets, tie-dyed t-shirts. The protesters let school officials out of the building and then chain the doors shut. By that night, the protesters will have vacated the premises after the faculty approves general amnesty for those who took Culkin and agrees to telegram President Richard Nixon its opposition to the war and to the suppression of dissent. During the standoff, no one is hurt. We interrupt winter break December 21, 1988 for a very special news bulletin. 
Pan Am Flight 103, a Boeing 747 carrying 259 passengers and crew en route from London to New York, has just gone down over Lockerbie, Scotland, killing everyone on board. Among them were two SUNY Oswego students, Colleen Brunner and Lynn Hartunian, remembered as exceptionally talented, active women who touched the lives of many. The deaths of these two communication majors has left the campus devastated, made even more so in the wake of the grim discovery that the plane was brought down by a terrorist bomb. In coming years, a memorial to these two remarkable SUNY Oswego students will be dedicated in Penfield Library, celebrating the memory of two women who did so much in such a short period of time for the campus community and beyond. More news in a moment, but first, a word from our sponsor. If you're like many students in the 1990s, you're looking for faster ways to communicate with family, friends, and your professors. Well, now you can with the help of a worldwide computer network called the Internet, which originated in the science community as a useful tool for conducting research. Oswego is jumping on this technological breakthrough, becoming a leader in online instructional use and development within the SUNY system. Before the end of this decade, the school will invest money in servers and other high-tech equipment that will be connected to more than 100 terminals and microcomputers at locations throughout the campus. Just imagine exchanging electronic mail with anyone in the world, with no long-distance charges, or in the case of Penfield Library, accessing periodical indexes faster than ever before and delivering them to a personal computer. In the not-too-distant future, continued investments in technology will usher the campus into the age of wireless, while adding new majors in both human-computer interaction and software engineering. This just in. It's a chilly autumn evening, September 11, 2001, and a crowd of SUNY Oswego students has gathered for a vigil to stand in solidarity in the aftermath of a life-changing event for every citizen of the country as over 3,000 Americans lost their lives in a series of terrorist attacks. In honor of the Oswego alumni who lost their lives on that day, a drive will be spearheaded to revive the Senior Gift Program, culminating in the construction of a beautiful memorial garden at Glimmerglass Lagoon. The memorial garden will be officially dedicated on September 11, 2005 as a gift from the graduating classes of 2002, 2003, 2004, and 2005. All the classes on campus when the World Trade Center collapsed. You're listening to WRVO, serving Oswego, Syracuse, and Central New York. And now the news, October 2008. As oil and commodity prices continue to spike, there are signs of trouble in the U.S. housing market increasing numbers of defaults, and a sudden freeze in consumer credit has ground the economy to a halt. Several of America's largest investment firms close or are merged in an attempt to stave off disaster. In New York, the financial meltdown has an immediate impact on SUNY colleges as the governor orders budget cuts to state institutions. Oswego administrators and faculty work to maintain classes and the high level of educational quality even as budgets shrink. As debt from two wars and the economic recession has made it more difficult to afford education, Oswego looks for new ways to help families within the region. Possibility scholarships provide unique opportunities for Oswego and Syracuse students interested in studying science and technology. Students who graduate from the program will get tuition, room, and board, along with the ability to do field research abroad. Possibility scholarships are one way that Oswego is helping to meet the challenges students face when attending college. Now for a look at our weather. The long-range forecast for 2009 calls for a steady dose of climate change to continue over much of the globe, prompting college officials to launch the Oswego Green Initiative. You can expect rolling recyclables for the rest of the spring semester. For those of you in Oneida Hall, that means 7,500 returnables. Turning our focus to the fall semester, it appears that conditions will be perfect for purchasing 16,000 apples from local farmers. And speaking of agriculture, let's not forget about corn. Why? 
because all hot and cold disposable cups will be recyclable, made from this renewable food source. Later in the fall semester, look for a groundbreaking on an environmentally friendly student townhouse complex called The Village. When finished in 2010, it will receive a gold Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design certification. As a result, the forecast for the campus has been updated. Time now for a look at international news. You can expect to see an increased investment in undergraduate research for the foreseeable future as SUNY Oswego unveils its Global Laboratory Initiative. As part of this program, qualified undergraduates spend anywhere from two to ten weeks working in international laboratories spread over seven continents, developing solutions to global problems while promoting international understanding. This pioneering laboratory will be anchored by the school's 230,000 square foot LEED Gold Certified Science Complex currently under construction. When completed in 2014, this science corridor will become the home of future researchers, combining the international connections of SUNY Oswego faculty with the talents, research proficiency, and intellectual curiosity of undergraduates to advance scientific knowledge in the most promising fields of study. That's all the news for now. Stay tuned to this station for continued updates on world events that touch SUNY Oswego. You're listening to WRVO.